from Alan Mahad. Ex-Muslim testimony. First of all, my whole family are still Muslims and I am the only Christian and they still accept me. Now that's a surprise. I had a really terrible childhood. My dad was literally beating me up for six to eight years when I was a kid. When I was 14, I moved out of my parents' house because I wanted to kill myself multiple times and I had enough of my dad abusing me. As I moved out, Satan got a hold of me and had me in control. Like, I lost my virginity to really bad girls, smoked weed, drank alcohol, and stuff like this. The only religious thing I kept holding was not eating pork. So some years after, I missed my mom and I moved back home and my dad stopped beating me up, but abused me really hard verbally. Because of the hard verbal abuse, I got hard depression and the suicide thoughts came back. I didn't eat for two days sometimes, didn't brush my teeth, didn't shower, I was literally living a zombie life. In this time, I read the Quran to get away, the depression, but it got worse. So one day, I asked myself if the Quran, the word of God, ain't helping me to try something else. So I started watching videos about Christianity, and it was so amazing hearing all the gospel for the first time. That God is love, that Jesus is not only a prophet, but the son of God. Go read the Quran and find the words, God is love. You won't find those words. So I kept watching those videos and watched some films about Jesus, and I cried and felt the presence of God for the first time ever. So I decided to surrender to Jesus and to give my life to the living God when I confess that I am a sinner, that I want to repent of my sins, that Jesus died for me on the cross and raised me from the dead on the third day. I cried literally a lake of tears and felt the presence of God so much I felt like Jesus was waiting for this moment for so long. Alright, in this time I was reading the Quran and the Bible to compare both books. Good idea. I challenge all Muslims of this world to debate with me. Now that's a guy like me. There was one thing in the Quran that doesn't make any sense, and it's called the Quranic Dilemma. You can Google it or watch it on YouTube. Surah 5 verse 68 is telling that the Muslims should obey the Bible and the Torah, but the Bible says, Jesus says, in the New Testament it is finished, no more revelation. And in the Quran, I don't know the Surah now, it says you're not allowed to have Christians and Jews as friend. How does that make sense with Surah 568? The next crazy thing is that the Quran says the worst sin is shirk. Shirk equals praying to other gods other than Allah. So how does it make sense when the Quran is saying in Surah 568, obey the Bible? Obeying the Bible means also to pray to Yahweh the Father and praying to Jesus. So the Quran is telling Muslims to make shirk? So guys, decide for yourself. But for me, the Quran is satanic and comes from Satan. Why is the Quran satanic? Because Jesus warned us about false prophets like Muhammad. You want to prove Muhammad was a demon-possessed man and a pervert pedophile? I'll give it to you. Let's begin with the Bible, how Maria got her revelation from Angel Gabriel. Angel Gabriel came to Maria and said, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. How did Muhammad get his revelation from Angel Gabriel? Muhammad was meditating on the mountains called Hira. One day when he was meditating, an angel of light came to him and said, Read in the name of God who created. Muhammad said, I can't read. The angel of light said again, Read in the name of God who created. So Muhammad told him again, I can't read. So Angel Gabriel took Muhammad's neck and choked him and said, Read in the name of your Lord who created, and he could read. Do you guys see the difference between the revelation of Angel Gabriel to Maria and Muhammad? So one day I was reading the Bible and I was shocked. Satan can transform into an angel of light and deceive others. So after all, I was 100% sure Muhammad got his revelation from Satan, transformed into an angel of light. The pervert pedophile thing I mentioned is that Muhammad had nine wives and one of his wives called Aisha was nine years old. More proof? Okay, Sahih al-Bukhari are hadiths of Muhammad's life. Hadith equals everything that came out of Muhammad's mouth. And I don't know the exact number of the hadith, but it says, I don't even know if I get my revelation from an evil spirit or God. In another hadith, Muhammad told his followers that he went to a cliff and wanted to kill himself because of the demonic spirit in him or in his mind. But the spirit was telling him not to commit suicide because he had to finish to fulfill the Quran. You can Google everything. Islam is not a religion of peace. It has so much hatred in the Quran. Like Muhammad battled 64 wars in his lifetime and beheaded so many people like the ISIS nowadays. By the way, Muhammad said, if I die or you die, I don't know where I am going or where you are going. But Jesus said, if you follow me and take me as your Lord and Savior, you shall get eternal life in heaven. Jesus never killed or made war against anyone. On the contrary, Jesus healed and helped people. Another magnificent wonder is to go on YouTube and write Jesus near-death experience. 90% of all people whose hearts stopped saw their spirit out of their body and saw Jesus or a big white light in a tunnel and a feeling of love. What does Jesus say? 
I am the light of the world. Now go on YouTube and write Muslim dies and sees Allah and Muhammad. Quick spoiler, you won't find one video. So guys, please go and read the Quran and the Bible for yourself and compare each to the other. I will guarantee you, you will see that the Bible is the truth. God bless you all. This guy makes a lot of really good points. I came across the same points in my research about the Quran, and if you want to hear what that has to say, click over here. I'll see you next time.